Hi, and welcome back to part 5 of Castle Brokenhead Presents Let's Play Dragon Quest. Last time, we arrived at the town of Cole and found out that we needed 3,000 gold in order to upgrade our armor again. As you can see, I've already gone and done that. I'm in the desert south of Cole, where I spent... 53 minutes fighting skeletons and scorpions, magidrakis when they didn't run away, and ghosts uh, when they also didn't run away. Uh, took about, well, less than half the time. Oh, we've got a level up. Uh, you can see we got up to level 10 where we actually learned Stop Spell. And now we've hit level 11. Quite a fortuitous time. Uh, took about 16 minutes into grinding for that gold before I had uh, level 10. Uh, still, it took less than half the time to get 3,000 gold uh, over by coal than what it took to get uh, the 2,300 over by Garrett Hand. take a look here first, and we can see that our defense power is currently at 45. We're going to find out how much of a difference this armor upgrade is actually going to make. Alright, so he buys that back. Uh, no, we don't need anything else. Let's check out our status again. Alright, so 8 defense power from that one little power up. Uh, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good as far as upgrades go in this game. Uh, we're going to get some sleep. Uh, I do find it interesting. It's actually cheaper to sleep over here by coal than it is over uh, by Garenham. Uh, now, you might be wondering why it is that I talked up the skeletons and how badass they are uh, when they were only seeming to do one or two damage uh, in the fights you've seen me take on take them on so far, uh, but until level 7, when you get that sleep spell, they're actually pretty powerful. Uh, the only reason the damage they were doing seemed so low uh, was because, well, frankly, it's because I already had the half plate. Uh, if you fight them earlier on, before you have that half plate armor, they're doing between 7 and 12 damage every time they hit, and they'll end up killing you really quickly. Uh, during that grinding, they were actually sometimes doing uh, up to as much as 5 damage per hit at times. Uh, now you can see I'm buying myself a set of wings. Uh, and that's because that little cave uh, to the south there, we're going to ignore that for now. I know, I know. You all thought I was going there, but I, I wasn't. It was never going to happen. Uh, so we're actually going to... Use these wings to fly over here, because we have a new project. See that cave right there? That's where we're headed, folks. It's time to head to the Rock Mountain Cave. Quite possibly the most original name anyone's ever conceived of. Or, you know, not. So, this could be a bit of a longer episode. I, uh, actually forgot to start timing it until right now. Uh, I generally try to keep it between uh, 10 and 20 minutes, uh, but we're actually going to go for the whole cave, because why not? Um, I know I haven't been editing out any of the fights with the monsters. Uh, that is in part due to the fact that they just happen too quickly for me to edit them out effectively, especially with so many of them running away, and partly due to the fact that I'm just not that good at editing yet. Uh, be patient with me, guys. This is my first LP series, and uh, I'm doing my best. If you don't like it, well, then it's a good thing I'm not asking you for money. Um, I don't hesitate to use profanity, because I don't give a fuck about the money. Uh, growing up in North America has left me quite spoiled. 
so too fucking bad. Uh, if you are not a fan of my language, uh, I recommend checking out H.C. Bailey. He actually has LPs for a bunch of these, uh, and is much cleaner language than I am. I'm not going to try because I don't give a flying fuck whether or not uh, I am demonetized. Uh, this is just for fun for me. So, we are now at the Rock Mountain Cave. Let's take a little luxie here. And you remember earlier I said, in an earlier episode, I said there was a spell that would light things up a lot better than those crappy little torches. That is our Radiant spell, and as you can see, it's a much larger area that gets lit up. Uh, we are going to have some new monsters in here at some point. Ooh, staircase. No! I want the treasure! Give me the fucking treasure! I'm kidding, folks. Uh, we will get that treasure in due time. A little red herring there with that staircase. Uh, when we do run into the new monsters, I will tell you about them. Uh, now, the thing about this Radiant spell is that it uh, kind of... it wears off. So, with time, the uh, illuminated area will get smaller. We found a herb. Let's smoke it. I mean, no, that's not how the herbs work. They are not smoked. Alright, let's take... As you can see, we've got this big, exciting area. And we have our first new monster, the Drakima. Uh, it has about as much health as uh, your standard scorpion about, at about 20 hit points. The Drakima was not even supposed to be here, uh, according to my notes. So, good to know that it is in fact here. Uh, has an attack of 22, a defense of 26, very fast, a speed of 32, uh, can give up to 20 gold, uh, about 11 experience, and they have the ability to cast not only hurt, but they can also heal themselves. So as you can see, he did in fact hurt me. Twice. Motherfucker. I mean, he is white, so, and I'm, so am I, so I can say that. I swear I will not use any other slurs. Just ones against white people, because we are, in fact, the worst. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask everyone. Alright, so let's take a look here. We just found the fighter's ring. We take a look at what our strength is and our attack power. We've got 39, 54. Let's see what happens when we put on the fighter's ring. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! That's right, this item is completely useless! Yeah, how's that for fun? Uh, it's actually a glitch in the game. It's supposed to increase your attack power by one, but it doesn't. Alright, next new monster, we have the Droll. It has 25 hit points, uh, 24 attack power, 24 defense power, speed of 14, can give up to 25 gold, and it has 10 experience. Has no special abilities, just straight attacks. Now, you may notice that I am very quick on the attack. Part of the reason for that, the entire reason for that, in fact, is because I don't play fair. And why should I? I am actually using a plug-and-play SNES controller. And so I have my uh, Y and X buttons set to be auto-fire for B and A, respectively. And so that is why I am able to uh, launch such effective attacks. So, 
That is a thing. Alright, we have another treasure chest where we get 13 gold. And the Cracker Drake is back. So what I was saying about level 10, we actually got our stop spell at that point. Uh, it is actually a fairly useful spell in this game. Uh, a lot of the spells you get in these games can wind up being pretty useless. Um, I personally find the hurt spell to be completely useless uh, in this game, which is the only game it actually appears in in the Dragon Quest series. In fact, I think in the remakes, they just got rid of it completely, uh, and renamed it, uh, to Frizz and, or Fizz and Frizz, or whatever it is that they use, um, which is their, basically their version of the Fireball. Alright, we gained 130 gold from that. That's not chump change in this game. 130 gold can be hard to come by. So as you can see, we're down now to the same level of light that we would have from a torch. Uh, there's a couple more monsters we haven't fought yet, uh, but given to the, that uh, some of my notes seem to be off, uh, possibly referring to a different version in terms of the gold amounts, uh, <laughs> here's another one that I was not expecting to find in this cave. Uh, the Warlock. I uh, wasn't expecting to run into one of these until we reached the Remalder area. They have 30 hit points, uh, 28 attack, uh, defense of 22, speed of 49, so they're very fast. They can give up to 35 gold, and then they give 14 experience. Uh, these guys can be particularly deadly in that they cast not only Hurt, but Sleep. And Sleep is a spell that works very well on us. It works very well on other creatures, and it works even better on us, at least until we are much higher level. This is where I recommend bringing out your stop spell. As you can see, the very first thing he did was try to fucking put us to sleep. Of course, he tried to put us to sleep first. If I hadn't used that stop spell, I would already be dead. Uh, and that's just truth right there. Alright, so we want to get back up that staircase and hopefully not fight too many more of these warlocks, because they will kill me. Uh, make no mistake, once you're asleep, you are asleep. It's supposed to be random, but in my experience, you're going to be asleep for four rounds minimum. I... oh, thank goodness. I do not want to be fighting this guy. Fortunately, it also prevents him from using Hurt, which is the other way he kills us. Because uh, his attacks aren't very strong. But once he's got you asleep, uh, physical attacks wake up a sleeping opponent, or you when you're asleep, much more easily uh, than we would be woken from anything else, really. Scorpion in here, that's expected. Uh, we are not going back down to that bottom floor again anytime soon. I do not want to have to spend more magic fighting those uh, goddamn warlocks. Uh, they, again, can be very lethal. We are going to explore some more of the cave. Uh, we've actually got all the treasure already, but I do want to show it off uh, and possibly find those other monsters. If we can. But it looks like we are not actually... Oh, we are going to go downstairs one more time. Just to show off that this staircase actually leads to a dead end. And maybe, just maybe, find one of the other monsters we're looking for. Alright, here we go. We have the 
Altered guys. They only have 23 hit points. Uh, their attack's only 18, defense 20. They're listed as no speed, or speed of zero. I'm not sure I buy that. Again, some of my information is a bit sketchy, so I do apologize for that. Uh, they give up to about 18 gold and 7 experience points. They can cast hurt. See, that was not 23 hit points. Uh, one thing about this game is the hit points on monsters does actually vary. So there is one more monster that's supposed to be down here, but if we do not see it before I manage to get out of here, oh well, uh, it will be in the next cave. And I am perfectly okay with that. And here we are, uh, the Druin. I have no idea what the hell that is supposed to be. Uh, the design didn't translate well to 8-bit. I see it's got an eye, a couple antenna, and some tentacles, and then some fuzzy things that may be legs or feelers or... Not 100% sure. Uh, what can I tell you about this? It's got 22 hit points, 22 attack power, uh, defense of 18, speed of 15, up to 16 gold, gives 7 experience points, and has no special abilities whatsoever. All said and done, I would say this was a fairly profitable trip. About that fighter's ring, I've heard people say that it does actually put up your attack, it just doesn't show it on your stats, but that doesn't make sense. The game uses your printed stat for the attack. It's more likely that it was just a bug in the programming of the game, and that it does absolutely nothing. So, it does nothing. Uh, anybody who tells you different is wrong. And you can tell them that Reverend Brokenhead said so. You can also tell them to go fuck themselves, because I don't care. I probably don't know them. And if I do, then I'd tell them the same thing myself, so it doesn't matter. Now, the only thing we are still going to do is head back to where it all began. Uh, not for any particular reason, aside from the fact that we're going to sell off that fighter's ring, since it is completely useless. All it is doing is taking up a spot in our inventory. Which means killing some slimes. Yay! Killing slimes is fun. Not really. But whatever. Alright. So we're back at Breconary. We want to sell. We're going to sell this torch, because now that we have the Radiant spell, we will never use torches again. You might think, oh, what if we run out of magic? Then we die. Like, that's straight how it's going to be played from this point forward. Alright, so we are going to sell the fighter's ring. He's going to buy it for 15 gold. So what was that fighter's ring actually worth? 15 gold. I would pay 30 gold for one attack power. Because uh, things sell for half their value here. Uh, or anywhere in this game. But we don't get the attack point, so there's no point in having it. As has been mentioned, we're going to heal up real quick here. Ah. Uh, maximum hit points is 62 now. It's not bad. And then we're actually going to save the game with King Lorik, something I never do. Um, and then next time, when we pick this up again, uh, we are going to finally head south to Remalder, where rumor has it, Magic keys can be purchased so that we can open this door to get our boxes of sadness. And this door 
so that we can find out what useless shit those people have to say. That is how it's going to happen. If you don't believe me, well, it's going to be a couple episodes before we actually open the doors, because once we are in Remolder, we're going to have some other stuff to do. And let's not forget, we still need to find that princess who uh, is in some random cave in the west, and apparently might be guarded. So... I will see you next time for part six, and until then, stay frosty, my friends.